Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by our patrons, like Mieru. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it would also really help us out. Thanks for your support, guys. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is time once again for another Let's Talk FGO Wanted, our regular series about upcoming five stars. Originally it was limited, you know, but uh, honestly I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, even just the passive stuff like views and likes about Wanted, so I figured you guys wouldn't mind more Wanted. And here we are, uh, talking about a permanent unlock. So yes, in case it's not obvious from that intro and from obviously the thumbnail and the title and all the other stuff in the video, uh, we're going to talk about Osmandias today. I hope you guys are as excited as I am, because I'm super excited. That's right, very excited. Love this guy. Uh, which we'll get to in a second. So first, let's do an overview, in case this is your first one video. They always say to treat every video like it's your audience's first. We will talk about a new upcoming servant. In this case, Ozymandias. We will cover four main sections. We will talk about their actual background historically. In this case, we'll talk about his actual history, because he's a historical character. But if they're mythological or folkloric, we talk about that stuff. We will talk about their fate lore. Stuff they've encountered in various fake mediums and universes and so on. Which is sometimes relevant and sometimes not. Then we will talk about the mechanics. We'll talk about what you actually use the servant for. Because, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily feel a character right away just from their story and stuff. But this will give you an idea of what their mechanical niche is. And some people like characters better because they're also good. And then lastly, we'll talk about how rare they actually are. Because even on a permanent unlock... Getting spooked by an SSR is really statistically unlikely, right? Like, it's nothing you should ever count on from a statistical point of view. So, we'll uh, we'll talk about where those rate-ups are, and those are good opportunities to see if maybe you want to spend some quartz, or just some tickets, or you want to take a pass. Who knows? I'm not the guy who tells you to roll quartz, I just tell you about servants. So let us jump into the history. And that history is that Ozymandias is the servant name of Ramses II, a.k.a. Ramses the Great, Probably one of the, well, maybe not the best known because Tutankhamun is also very popular because we found a set of his tomb, which was very odd. We might talk a little bit about that, maybe not. But basically, uh, Ramses the Great is probably the one of the best historically known and one of the most popular, shall we say, Egyptian rulers. Uh, he is considered the great ancestor by many to come after him. And in fact, there were nine Ramses after him. He was just the second. There's a reason why they call him the Great, because... Those other guys weren't as great. I feel bad for them. So, also known as the King of Kings, many other things, uh, he's a big deal. The name Ozymandias actually comes from a Greek transliteration of one of his names, his uh, throne name, which means the justice of Ray, chosen of Ray, uh, Ra and Ray, which is the same guy different ways, that's the sun god, big deal. He's uh, very prominent in Ramses' life. And Ramses is such a famous pharaoh, Ramses the Great, I should say. For a lot of reasons, first off, vastly, wildly successful military campaigns. He made several campaigns into Syria, uh, south into Nubia, and even into Libya. Broke good deals with various other empires around Egypt. Because uh, territorially, Egypt didn't expand very far because they were very connected to the Nile, both in terms of their, their resources and their infrastructure and their spiritual. So they didn't necessarily go far, but he did pretty good at what he did. And this, of course, also means that Egypt got a lot of wealth in terms of tribute and conquest and agreements with some other nations, so they were very prosperous during this time period, which wraps into the second thing, which is very relevant as a servant, which is that he built a lot of monuments, a lot of monuments to himself, uh, giant statues, the shrines such as the one in Abu Simbel, and of course this is relevant to fate, the Ramesseum, which is his mortuary temple complex, because uh, the afterlife is a big deal in ancient Egypt, in case you can't tell, all of that highly relevant. Also, he ruled and lived for a long time. Uh, based on historical accounts, he died when he was around 90, and he ruled for many, many years. Uh, there is a, almost like a jubilee you see, like with, um, for example, the, the English monarchy. There is a set of festivals for a pharaoh after he rules 30 years, and then for every three years after. Uh, they had quite a few of those festivals for Ramsay the Great. Alright, so he's a huge deal. Uh, massively influential, like I said, on the period, and just in general, uh, a solid guy in history. Also, it is often attributed to him that he was the pharaoh from Exodus, though obviously there's not a real concrete historical record for that. It's a relatively recent idea, I think. But it's a it's a common enough attribution, a rumor. So let's move into the fate stuff. So obviously fate likes to take the myth and make it real. So uh, as a pharaoh, Ramses is literally the child of a god. So he is super powered up uh, from being high levels of... And of course, uh, you know... 
being deified after death, even. Lots of other stuff like that. Now, Ozymandias is not actually a FGO original character. Uh, he first appears in Prototype Fragments, which is a light novel series, which is basically to Fate Prototype, the the cancelled original design for Fate before it got turned into an Arage that has been kind of reappeared in some other stuff. But basically, pre uh, Prototype Fragments is to that Fate Prototype as Zero is to Fate Stay Night. So he appears in the prequel, fights with regular Arthur, not Artoria, but regular Arthur. Uh, other characters such as Bryn, uh, Arash, Hassan of Serenity, and so on. Some other interesting characters show up. And in Fragments, he is... On power level tiers, he's definitely in the Gil range, or he's like a Gilgamesh or a Karna, you know, um, or he functions similar to, say, in the story, characters like Herc and Gilda Rays do, where they're like this big external threat where several masters and servants have to team up to beat him. Like, he's a big deal. I won't go into the details, obviously, because that's spoilers and stuff for an outside medium. You can actually... Well, maybe you can read translations or not. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're not officially, but maybe you'll find somebody to give summaries and stuff. I don't know. That's on you what you do when uh, works are not licensed in your country. Maybe you can read Japanese. I don't know. But yeah, no, he's a, he's a big deal in tears, uh, which obviously you can see. Uh, he's got a lot of dangerous, high-powered, and weird noble phantasms. He has access to uh, Ra's solar boat, which also shoots magic lasers, because whatever. He's got, like, magecraft and stuff, because... Nasuverse, and also he can summon a reality marble type effect of the Ramesseum and just, you know, just trap people in his temple and do terrible things with their balance because, yeah, whatever, power levels. Also, in addition to that, obviously, he's appearing in the story banner, so uh, guess what? He's fairly prominent in an upcoming story chapter. We're not going to go into details, but yeah, he's uh, in it quite a bit. You'll get to see him. I don't recall off the top of my head if he's a support at all, but he might be. He might be a support a couple times, but some aren't, you know. The, who's support and who's not can be kind of wishy-washy. But yeah, he shows up. You'll get to see a lot of him, uh, part of why he's popular. And yeah, that's about it for, for both history and lore. He's uh, fairly famous in both as himself and uh, in Fate. And obviously I will say that um, somewhat ironically, his name was used for uh, Shelley's poem about look on ye mighty works in despair. Uh, except you can't actually look on his mighty works and despair because they're still there. All right, let's uh, transition over into mechanics. All right, so as you can see from the graphic up on the screen, you can see Ozymandias, he's a five-star writer, in case that wasn't obvious earlier. You can see all of his attack and his other stats. Pretty typical for a writer. Got the usual star gen for them. Got the same star absorption, so guess what? He absorbs stars. Got an okay NP gens, you know, with two arts cards, which are both three hits. That's pretty good. And then he has a, a five-hit quick card, which can also regenerate MP. Pretty good. Variety of traits and so on. You can see his stats, which are fairly average. They're pretty close. They're pretty close together. Quite useful to keep a balanced servant like that. Slightly more HP than attack, but that's okay. And of course, you can see his Noble Phantasm, which is a single target buster. Golly gee. I guess it does damage. Uh, and yes, it does quite a bit of damage. So this deals damage to a single target to the tune of, you know, minimum 600%. It then locks the target's Noble Phantasm. It applies NP Seal for sure for one turn. And then it applies... Defense down for three turns. Very good work right there. And that can be quite a bit of defense down with some over, maybe over multiple NP copies. Who knows? Then let's talk about his skills, because the skills, I think, are really where Ozzy starts to come together. So first, he's got a very generic Charisma B, but remember, that's still for three turns for allies, and then it has a relatively short cooldown. You can't quite get to 20% at 10, but you can get to 10%, over 10%, in fact, with just a couple of levels, so that's decent, you know. Think about it this way. 10% uh, attack up is, you know, times 1.1, so if you do, like, 1,000 damage, you'll do, you know, 100 extra damage. If you do 2,000 damage, you'll do 200 extra damage, stuff like that. So it it's not a lot, but if you're doing lots of damage, which Ozzy can do, it's a little bit, and it's for your whole team. His second skill is Imperial Privilege A. So similar to the Roman Imperial Privileges, gives you the usual kit, you heal not an insignificant amount of HP. It scales very well, especially with his HP total. 3k is nothing to sniff at. Got a fairly short cooldown. And then you've got a very good attack and defense up for yourself for three turns, but it's at 60%. Now, obviously, under normal circumstances, that's dodgy, right? You don't want to do that. You don't want to do those chance-based buffs, especially when they're so close to 50-50. It can be very unreliable, which can really hurt your setups. But let's move into his third skill real quick. 
That's protection from raw A+. So the first thing this does is, for one turn, you increase your buff success rate for all allies. Not just for Ozymandias, but also all allies. But mostly for Ozymandias, because that means that 60% should jump to an 80% at level 1. And then all the way to 100% at level 10. Gee, I wonder if those two skills are supposed to go together. So that can really guarantee that those buffs proc under normal circumstances. It's really useful. Plus, it's for all team members. And then, on top of that, it's not just that. It's not just a thing that enables his other skills to work, but also helps allies. He also increases all allies' NP gauge directly by 20%. 20% is a great number. That means uh, K-scopes work right off the bat. Well, let me just tell you, it's anecdotal, but still, there are so, so many times when I'm trying to do, like, an NP chain, like, on a boss or something, and, like... Two-thirds of my team are at just, you know, they're within that 80% mark. They're at, like, 80 or 90% NP, and you're like, God, I really wish I could form an arts chain right now and guarantee that everybody can go. Uh, what if I could do that without having to take another return to attack? Boom. Protect. Perfect. Excellent. Very useful. So you can see he can juice himself up. You're talking about a not insignificant attack buff and defense buff for himself, which combined with his rounded-out attack and HP stats and a single-target Buster Noble Phantasm, and the fact that he can do the lovely Buster MP chain, uh, Brave chain, specifically, that's real good. He can definitely hit, but also he can enable allies, and a decent amount of survivability. And then, of course, we get into his passives. You have magic resistance, you know, pretty typical for a rider. Decent magic resistance, of course. A very good level of riding, which increases the effectiveness of his one quick card pretty good, so you can generate stars okay. And still, you know, also generate MP and all that good stuff. And then he's got that pinch of divinity for just a, a sprinkling a bonus damage, which everybody loves bonus. And actually, even though he is a permanent unlock, uh, his rate-ups aren't super common. So obviously he's going to be in the, the Camelot release campaign. It's about to come out because the Camelot chapter is going to drop. He's the big five-star centerpiece. And then he will be in the a option for the guaranteed SSR gotcha, which will come out right after that in the anniversary and of course uh he is in with lots of you know uh story locks and uh, permanent locks lots of class-based summoning campaigns which are always a great big model of, of who's on raid up but you never you know if you want to really try uh obviously as a male servant he'll be featured in Kalea boys collection raid ups he'll be in there at least so you got a better chance we are probably not going to do the interlude campaigns because our interludes tend to drop when the chapters that hold them drop or when the enemies, the servant enemies, who can be in the drop. So we don't really do campaigns for that, but maybe. Who knows? Um, we also will probably not get any FGO the stage-specific banners, but we might get other tie-ins. You never know. But there is also specifically the Pharaoh's Great Winter Thanksgiving Festival, which will be in a couple of winters, which will probably show up in some form. They'll tie it into, like, a, a uh, what you call it, like a con or something. They'll, they'll make that happen, I'm sure. Rephrase it a little. So that'll be a rate-up mostly for him. So he's got a decent chance, and of course, yes, if you throw enough quartz in the right ways, he might just show up. But, like we said before, never ever count on that. That is just really uncommon. And there, that's Ozzy. Uh, I probably undersold it a little, but uh, I fucking love this guy. Like, not just because he's really cool and powerful, but also because he's Ramses the Great, and uh, I really, really like Ancient Egypt. Super cool. Really, uh, also, fairly well justified. Like, some of the Stuff like, okay, so the sunboat has lasers for some reason? I don't know, it's magic. It works, okay? Uh, and he's got some pretty interesting looking animations. Some of the giant sphinxes and stuff. His NP animation is actually just to crush people with pyramids. Just, fuck you, get smushed. But real entertaining stuff. Uh, I hope to eventually get him, like, uh, especially with the way they're laying out the guaranteed SSR. If he, uh, if he pops up on that gold rider flip side, won't be mad. Won't be mad. And, of course, if you are into male SSRs, uh, you know, he's he's one of your, your options out there. Always popular. So this is basically the end of Wanted. Covered all the four areas. Covered it pretty good, I think. And uh, if you uh, like this sort of episode and, and want to see more from us, like, on non-limited servants, go and let us know. You can... Just liking and watching the video should be enough to let us know. But you can also specifically let us know in the comments. That's really great. Very important to do both of those things. And, of course, if you are new here and have not already, please consider subscribing great way to keep track of all our videos as they come out. You can also hit the bell for notifications if you haven't already. Keep track of videos right away. And if you support us on Patreon, as we said at the front of the show, you can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies. And it would just really help us out. Also, you can uh, buy a shirt. We do merch. Lots of shirt designs. Lots of stuff. 
lots of fun stuff. You should check him out. Maybe I'll get lucky to draw an Ozymandias theme. There's no promise in that. He's not going to do it. He's busy with it. He hasn't uh, drawn a shirt in like forever. Rip me. But that takes us to the end. I will see you whenever the next video comes out. Spoilers, it's gonna be Lancer, Artoria, or Da Vinci. Or possibly the two of them, like, back to back. But yeah, we'll see you whenever the next one comes out. And let you know if you want that servant. And I'll see you guys then.